welcome to another podcast with one of our great pod, uh, with our great partners in Eurovia. And we've got Andrew Tomlins here today. Well, we'll call him Andy for today. Uh, Andy, it's great to see you. And actually one of our newest in 2024 partners. So we're very excited about this partnership. Thank but we're actually here today to try and find out a little bit more about your business and how service leavers, ex-forces people, maybe families of, of forces, spouses, that can think and actually get into your business. But before we do that, just tell me a little bit about yourself, who you are and kind of where you've come from, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so my name is Andrew Tomlins, lovely to be here. I'm the business director for Eurovia Surfacing. So I look after um, a national business and we basically carry out asphalting works on all carriageways, motorways, single carriageways and that. And uh, really my background has been sort of as a labourer, just uh, no qualifications at the time and just uh, enjoy the trade of just working one of my dad's sites actually when I was younger. Gradually got some qualifications and worked my way through various firms of being labouring to then setting out engineer to then actually being a site agent and into management and gradually over time worked my way through to the position where I am now, which is, as I say, looking after about 180 employees across the country, which is great. Wow. We talk about asphalt and some th things like that, which a lot of people may or may not understand. What does that actually mean? And, and to go and work on the roads, for example, if that was one of the jobs people went to, what would that be doing? What, what does it actually mean? So effectively, when you go out in your car or you walk along the edge of a road at the moment, the, the road makeup itself is asphalt. So right. what you see and what you drive over is asphalt. And we replace that, basically. Ah, okay. And that's what we do. So we remove that material and we plane it out or mill it out. Very large machine that effectively has a drum and it literally rips out the existing material, turns into small aggregate and that gets taken away. And then through an asphalt plant, they mix new asphalt that comes back onto site. That goes into a paver, effectively the lorry tips up, puts some material into a paver, that comes out the end of it nice and flat. And then the new material is actually rolled with large rollers that we use as well. We actually level it off and you've got a new surface, basically. And that can be at various levels, various types of asphalt we can lay as well, mm. on all types of roads and carriageways that uh, that uh, you, you come across, whether it be the M25, as I say, or down to a single lane as well. So yeah. very different environments. But that's a very simple description of what we do. But yeah, uh, there's it's, it's a bit more logistics around it. Well, I imagine that's one of the questions I was going to ask next was it seems like one big, huge project just to, to do one part. So within that, there must be lots of different segments and different kind of job opportunities and things like that that would be worthy of service leavers. Um, perhaps they're not into relaying roads and things when they're in the military, but certainly a lot of the things that um, are, are in between a project and running projects or health and safety, things like that. What areas um, are you looking for, particularly for service leavers to come in to do from maybe the lower level to the higher level? What kind of jobs are we talking about? Yeah, well, I'll give you an idea what uh, literally the business that I look after. So there's a number of, uh, we call the management units within the business. So basically the main one is asphalt surfacing. And within that, you'd have a, a team of eight um, paving technicians effectively on site who are literally covering the whole site. Some of them are using, you know, drivers of the rollers that we need. Okay. Some of them are operators of the paving machine that we need. Some of them are starting off as operatives, but they get trained on to using the other pieces of the kids as well. So you've got surfacing or asphalt technicians, we call them, actually part of that gang. So we need the, we need to replenish those across uh, the country because we've got some people coming into retirement mm -hmm. and we've got some new contracts as well that we need to supplement with new employees. Don't have to be trained. We would do all the training for yourselves. Okay. But what I will say for those people, the behaviours we need is they work outside, mm. generally in all sorts of seasons, and it's raining outside at the moment, but so we work in the rain, but it can be cold, it can be hot, and it's outside. So that's one area we need, which is basically our surfacing uh, operatives. Yeah. Other areas I look after is uh, logistics, and we have low loaders, and we have a requirement for HGV drivers. Right. So those people just like driving, we move our plant and kids around, 
We also have for one of our sister companies, the asphalt production. We need to bring the asphalt in and out and move the material and bring the material back in basically. So we need drivers of tippers. So HGV drivers we're always looking for basically. Mm -hmm. um, the plant needs maintaining, so we need fitters as well. So we've got a workshops. So basically we have fitters that come out on call to rep you know, repair the machinery in the plant we have on site, but also maintain it in the workshop as well. So there's quite a broad scope of, let's say, hands-on operational people we need. But then also, also through that, we have supervisors who actually look after and manage the team on the site. Okay. We are looking to train those up as well. And we put you through a course on how to look after servicing teams. And depending on how that goes as well, we can look at further training and people that need to be further the, the chain as well as such. So um, that's probably the core area of our requirements at the moment. Yeah. So qualifications wise is, a, is an interesting one because everyone believes you have to leave the military with a thousand qualifications, which kind of isn't true. Um, within every arena and if a company is willing to then train people then clearly you know there's a there's some good stepping stones people can take at any level there all the way up to those supervisory or management levels so when we're looking at military people we could be looking at engineers mechanics yeah. um, yeah, so certainly you know the remi and the royal engineers um, yeah. and there will be all kinds of people within those areas um, that will probably fit within your business as well, which is which is fantastic. So actually, the world's the oyster for, for for people. And what I would actually suggest they do is get in touch with you. And we have got the inquiry form just next to this this um, short podcast as well. Um, now, some of the questions people are going to be asking is, what do I do next? And Andy, you know, am I going online? Do I just come through this inquiry form? Do I come to a show? Can I get in touch direct? Is there, you know, what's the best way for them to, to kind of get through to your guys, your high res to yourself? Yeah, they can go to our, our website, uh, eurovia.co.uk. Um, I've got a LinkedIn profile. You can come through that, which I think will come through yourselves in a way, John, anyway, and obviously through yourselves and your website when we get LinkedIn. So, you know, I've got an email address. I'm happy to give that out on direct inquiries, which is okay. Andrew. Dot Tomlins at eurovia.co.uk. So I'm happy for that to go out because I don't mind people coming direct to me. So I can guide them down the right path of who they need yeah. to speak to. And I'm doing that already. So certainly for our website, it's probably a good starting point. Look us up, see see what you think and get a feel for it. I mean, you know, I'll go back to the training sort of things. Yes, if you have some training, brilliant. But all I look is for, uh, you know, a certain skill set is, don't mind working outside. It sounds a daft thing, but hands-on approach, physical job. You know, safety aware. It is obviously an industry that we need to be safety aware on. Um, team working, which I know is going to be uh, one that's you'll carry forward anyway, and a lot of the people will do anyway. And probably time management. All we ask is, look, you know, just good time management. And it sound, sounds simple, but those factors there is a perfect start for us. Then we would develop you as far as you want to go. Yeah. Well, time management's a biggie for service people. That it's born in them from the day they arrive. Exactly. They've got to be there it five is. minutes before. And it seems, seems so simple, but actually it has a knock-on effect and they become really good with that kind of ethic. Well, to finish, we're probably looking at something that's, uh, well, two interesting points, really. The first one is location. I know you've mentioned some locations, so if you could be like a little bit more specific about the whole of the UK. And also something that I'm not saying tell me the exact wage structure or salaries, because clearly some people might be on higher levels and things like that. But what would somebody expect as a location? And secondly, what kind of salaries are we looking at with different in different areas? Well, give you an idea of location. The, the workshop and the logistics hub, I guess you could say, is in a place called Slade Green, which is near Dartford in the southeast. Okay. So just near the Dartford Crossing, effectively, is where it is. That's the base of it. However, we have some logistics hubs that actually work out the West over in Worcester. Um, we have contracts, and that probably is an easy way to describe it of where we work, because what we do is we have people who actually, they don't go to a depot, they go direct from home to the work site. So we've got the Worcestershire contract, for example, okay. and we have Surrey, Essex, Hertfordshire, and Cheshire. So we do have the opportunity to actually, 
for those that want to work just on site for a surfacing crew, those are the sort of areas we're looking at, basically. Yeah. So probably the Midlands, Milton Keynes as well. We're working in Buckinghamshire as well and London. So there's quite a few locations there that is uh, but predominantly south. We don't go probably as far as Cheshire's as far north as we go. And then down into Devon is as far southwest as we go, but we go right down into, the Ke into Kent as well. So that sort of gives you a good idea. Yeah. Um, Salary-wise or sort of wage-wise, really, you know, I'll give you an idea. Apprentices, we, we're taking on apprentices at the moment. And, you know, the government sort of levels for paper apprentices. Well, we're actually going above that. We're doing at least, I think, the national living wage, which, if I'm correct, something about £11.20, £11.30 an hour. That's the sort of level we've got in for the apprenticeship. So that's even before getting trained up. Semi-skilled people, and that, that's sort of those that have just started probably coming on about... 130 a shift or 13 pound an hour, 14 pound an hour. And then when we go to the, the, the more skilled people, you could be looking in the region of something like 17 pound an hour and above, depending on that management. But we, we do try and structure a bit on the experience because obviously we've got the existing people as well and we develop them through as well. But, you know, we that can be some of the discussions that we have when people apply as well and see what, uh, what they want to do what the abilities are and where we perhaps we, we see them based and the development plan we put, put in with them sort of thing. Okay, so, that's in interesting. So it's, it's it's always good to give locations because we don't want to tell people in Newcastle you can get a job when clearly... Yes, that. that will be a bit of a challenge, certainly, but... Uh, certainly will. Um, apprenticeships, an interesting one. To, and I was going to actually finish on the salary, but apprenticeships, what are we looking at at apprenticeship? Are we talking about people who are... Uh, 18, 19, or are you happy to take people who are 25 and 30 who want to get an apprenticeship into a new arena? Yeah, probably. I mean, there's no real age cap as such, but we're probably going up to about 30 years of age, you know, certainly up to that sort of level. That is a good starting point. It's MBQ2, I think, just off the top of my head. It runs for about 18 months. It goes through Telford College, but again, we sort out all of the training aspect of it. You effectively work with a surfacing crew. You start as you shadow the team on sites. Yeah. Then you gradually start to use upon the equipment okay. and you get trained up and you get a certificate at the end of it. Then once you've gone through the course, then we actually give you a contract and then you'll see a step up in your wages as well. So that's that's where we sort of go about it. Um, and it is the first of its kind. Mm. We were the first ones to roll it out and that's the first cohort finished about a year ago. We're now going on to the second cohort now. So that's that's really interesting. So you basically get qualified, get paid whilst you're doing it, and then guaranteed a job. Yeah, that's fantastic. We... And I, I see I see some service people wanting to do that. Absolutely, um, maybe the younger ones clearly, but also the family. Um, yeah. of service people. You know, my children were mm -hmm. 18, 19, 20 by the time I left the military, and maybe a lot of movement around doesn't help with them trying to get good jobs. So this could actually fit in really nice, nicely. So we'll look out for that because that gives us other options for families as a whole, not just for the service lever as well. Yeah, so we're doing the second cohort now. One thing I will say, once, once we get to the maximum number, of course. generally every 12 to 18 months, we'll be rolling it through again. Yeah. So, um, but no, it's a great opportunity. It's only one way of uh, you know getting the, the right skill set to come through and develop our teams. Yeah, so so they they've got it, ladies and gents. So direct from the horse's mouth from Andy. So get in touch. You can get in touch direct. Maybe have a look on the website to see the kind of jobs that are available, and then come straight through the direct inquiry form on our site or straight through into Andy's email on LinkedIn. But Andy, thanks very much for um, coming in today. No, and, um, it's all been a pleasure. Look forward to um, more success in the future with with you guys. Thanks, well, thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Take care. Oh, 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 oh.